Good, uh, good day, everyone. So I thought uh, quickly, it's November 10th. Uh, I can't imagine I'm going to be buying or finding any new tabletop games before the end of the year. Um, but I also didn't expect Dell to literally say, hey, look, here, here's my football game, dude. Take a look. I didn't expect two weeks ago for John Turnbull to say, hey, man, I've been working on a football game. Check this out. Uh, anyway, I normally don't do game of the year videos because I don't buy enough games in a year, really, or even experience enough games in a year anymore. I used to. There was a period where I was, when I came back to tabletop gaming, uh, full full board, whether it was role playing or sports, I was acquiring because I was hungry and to try everything. But since, you know, that peak, and then you start to settle into your favorite things, you start to realize, okay, I don't know if I really like full simulators as much as I thought I would and you start playing other you find other abstract games if I were to go back to 20 you know 20 I don't know uh I can't remember the year I got second season express it might have been the same year as grid zone in that year I got legends of boxing glory days of boxing there was a year there where I I, I don't know if I could have picked a game of the year right for me um, and I think that same year that I, it's, it's, well, actually, it's, I think I had second season express and grid zone, uh, for a year or so before fast ride football. Right. And, uh, all of those would have been game of the year games for me. The problem is I think one year I got them all. So this year, not a lot. I mean, I've got, uh, I got, um, let me think here. What did I get? I got, uh, da, 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 this year. Uh, most of this year has been spent on my own games, right? Um, as crazy as that sounds, you know, the release of Dark Age of Man, obviously, if I didn't write it and create it, I would, uh, that would be on my short list, but it's my own game. And I've spent most of the year finishing my stuff, all the stuff that has been, you know, there that needed attention and needed to be, you know, seen to and put in a permanent mo way. So the world hopefully can embrace it. It's in the lexicon of tabletop sports games and RPGs and for good or ill, take them or leave them. But they're now out there in the universe. And now I feel pretty relaxed. I'm, uh, the season, the year's done. So who knows what next year holds. But this year, uh, I, I, again, trying to remember what all I've, I, I've not even bought, just what I've acquired. So drive through football would be in the, uh, is a nominee. I mean, drive time football, definitely a nominee, a, a nominee. Uh, roller derby time a nominee for game of the year and again i kind of feel guilty about that because it's 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 my sports engine but but it's christopher's game but he took that sports engine and and just made this perfect it's like the perfect coupling of that sport to my time series engine and even though it's using my engine I, to be honest i've played almost i've played almost more of roller derby since getting it than I have anything else. Uh, it put a halt to drive time football. And then I, 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 I sit down and try to do a little drive time a little bit when I have time. And then of course, completing and revising my games and then I'm back to it and then done. I was like, okay, basketball time's done, right? I'm play, I'm go I was going to play test my score charts for the final version of big country basketball time that I will then put in a comic book. And then Dell sends me an email and Everything became about finishing full on football. And uh, I it's rare you find stuff that is this unique. It's rare that that somebody can surprise you with a game engine, uh, especially one that's simple, elegant, dynamic, fast, but leaves things wide open for me to interpret the results or even create my own charts to interpret the results. Uh, I've said it before. Uh, I haven't seen anything like it and uh, it's simple and it's elegant. You think, so what? Well, maybe so what, but it, it, but no one's done it before, at least that I'm aware of. And I haven't experienced it in the football, in the football space. And so this suddenly is like now clawing its way up to my, my game of the year. Also uh, this year, I bought the $80 hardback book of Dragon Slayer, which would be on my list of game of the year. Uh, it's a old school, uh, uh, it's OSR of old D&D &D revised. For those who don't know, all these sports cats, I know all you guys don't care for fantasy gaming much and role playing, but it's an epic tome, you know, a 400 or whatever it is, 300 page hardback epic tome, color, beautiful art, 
and it takes the old Dungeons and Dragons games of my youth back from the seventies and eighties and brings them into the uh, you know into a a, a, a a unified, interesting new rule space, and it's an expensive book. It's the most expensive book I've ever bought since college textbooks. Right? I mean, I I don't generally drop eighty dollars on a on a book. Uh, I remember the last time I did it was I think a I think it was a uh, textbook in college, which was thirty years ago. You know, I haven't been in college obviously in thirty years. And I, I, it was, uh, and I remember the prices when I was in college. I couldn't believe they, the the prices for textbooks was criminal. Then, uh, anyway, look, my point is, I've never bought a book uh, for that price, and that is amazing. The game is amazing. Book is fantastic. Okay, my point is, this year has not been about acquiring games, free or via purchase. I haven't experienced any new RPGs, uh, really. I mean, again, we play, we're playing Dragon. Slayer every Wednesday night or every other Wednesday night in our online role playing group, but uh, I can't. It's brand new, but I can't say it's a new experience. It's it's old D and D re uh, you know rewritten basically. So I can't I can't say that experience is wholly unique, as it's it's just a great game and it's a it does some things better or more efficient or whatever rule wise. But it's not it's not like a whoa earth shattering experience because I've been having it in role playing since I was a eight year old, nine year old kid, since we started playing D D when I was 10, you know. Um and then comes along games and uh, you know there come along these games uh like Second Season Express that greatly abstracts a full bodied simulator and it does so in such a way that you still feel like you're moving the ball. You still feel like there's quarterbacks involved or running backs involved and defense involved and you still can imagine how the team moved three blocks down the field. You can imagine that was a big pass or it was, it was a couple of runs and a, and a couple of passes and they moved 30 and they were going to kick a field. That was amazing. Second season express was like that revolutionized uh, about how much it spoiled me for full simulators. Like, okay, grid zone and second season express instantly spoiled me for how I wanted my tabletop sports experiences. One abstract fast but still feel like i'm playing a game of football full game of football and uh grid zone of course uh uh using dice grid zone of course using a, a fictional league fictional sport career mode second season express using real teams rated players from his full board simulator but pardon me for saying so bastardized into an abstract version and I've said this before, Second Season Express is not a abstract version of football. It's an abstract version of the Second Season Football Simulator. If you don't have Second Season's Football Simulator, you're going to be a little bit in the dark. Uh, not that you need it to play. And I've said it before. To me, Second Season Express stands alone. You could buy a season. You could buy that thing. And there would be some, there would be some uh, symbols and some nomenclature. You wouldn't quite know how that affects game. But you could play it ignoring those symbols and nomenclature and enjoy second season express as a standalone game. But, but my point is it's a simulate, it's a, it's an abstraction of second season. Right. But I play it completely standalone. Don't care at all. I hate to say this. It sounds so cold. I could care less about the full sim. Now um, I was never a huge fan of the full sim because it took too long. It was, it felt too cumbersome for me. You know, and then Grid Zone. So those two, those two games completely spoiled me for what I expect now in the time I have. Uh, I had already invented my games, like Football Time, Flash Football. Uh, but Football Time was a, you know, you roll on a simple chart. And it just tells you on that drive whether you score, kick a field goal, punt, right? It, you don't necessarily feel like there's the ebb and flow that you're moving the football up and down the field, right? It, it, those things aren't, you know, there. Uh, fast drive football manages to 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 make you imagine the the football field by the way it handles field position, right? It, it are you uh, deep in your own territory, or was it a long ponder? So fast drive football, although you don't need a football field, it you, you mark where you kind of start the drive on the field, and that can affect whether a drive finishes in field goal range or a drive finishes in an end zone. Genius, right? Fast drive football. Second season, you're actually moving a ball up and down a field. 
grid zone, you're actually moving the ball down the field. You don't move up and down the field. You move the ball down the field. It only goes in one direction, right? And then there's traditional sports games, which obviously act like traditional sports, right? You're moving a basketball up and down a court. You're moving a puck or around the ice. You're moving a soccer ball around the pitch. You're moving a football up and down the field. Um, and then there's really abstract where you just roll for a score. You roll for uh, for a, a result like game-winning drive football, right? Or, again, instant results football by, um, oh, my gosh, is it um, Downey? Or is that quick results football by Downey? There's so many games, so many games. But my point is, and then, you know, I've been playing, I've, like I said before, there is not a football game on the planet that I'm that I'm actually aware of that I had my hands on that I have not played or seen. There are some out there I probably have never seen, never played, and for whatever reason I'm not I'm not interested or I'm not going to invest the money. I'm not going to gamble my money or whatever. And then, you know, your longtime friend and partner and designer sends you this thing and you break it out and like, oh, okay, this is right there with Essex uh, Second Season Express. This is right there. With fast drive football, this is right there with drive drive time football. Now, again, drive time football, you don't move up and down a field, so it's more like game winning drive football. It's more like uh, it's more like football time, more like my game football time, more like game winning drive football, more like family football, where you just roll for the possession result and move on. Whether you roll once or twice or three times, or you roll this chart or that chart, there is no sense of the football field and moving the ball. But fast drive football, even though there's no field, there is a sense you're moving the ball. Second season express, you are moving the ball. Right. Um, grid zone, you are moving the ball. Uh, big country football, my full sim, which is incredibly abstracted. Also, you're moving the, you, the, the, you're moving the ball up and down the field. You, you either game log it or actually get out of real football and, and move it up and down for every yard you earn back or forth. And then there's those games that, that abstracted again, second season express grid zone. And now, uh, candlelight games, full on football designed by Dale Branham, using this elegant dueling dice system. And I am I am uh, enamored by it, right? And uh, so suddenly, I'm, I'm plowing through the year, uh, writing, uh, revising, and publishing my games, trying to get all of my stuff out there for people to get their hands on, whether it's free PDFs or, hey, you want it tangible so you can put it on your bookshelf, carry it around with you. There it is in a book. Go get it or get it free, whatever. You know, and then out comes, bam, drive time football and family football was this year first, which was genius. Right. And then, bam, there's drive time football. And then, bam, I get this roller derby and then, bam, Dell hits me with full on football all within all within. Now, family football was way back. I think I want to say it was way back in the spring. Maybe I can't remember when I found family football, but everything's so like all of these games like bang, 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 hit me in like the last month and a half. And it's like uh, unbelievable. All of them remarkable, right? Uh, what John has done further refining drive time football. Brilliant. I mean, he's just, he's, he's added the punt and kick return element. He's added or somebody, if he hasn't, somebody has added the field goal, a random field goal charts for those who want to kick field goals, you know, and, and it's incredible. And I'm sitting around going, okay, I, I want my flash. I want my field general football, Fast action cards done. And uh, fortunately, I know a guy who makes brilliant cards. So I contact him and we got that done. I'm waiting for them to come so I can start playing Phil Jim football here uh, again. And that is a full sim. You flip a card for every single snap of the game. That can take anywhere. Well, I I, ref, I, I can get it down to about a 30-minute game. But it takes, you know, between 45 minutes to an hour generally, depending on, you know, how focused you are. But that's a fast action deck card. And that's a full sim. Ball moves around the field. We account for every single play of game. Uh, so this year for me, my own invention, Big Country Football, which was, came to me as a muse. I literally woke up one day, had this idea, jotted it down, play test this, and wait a minute. I think if I work the probabilities out, I got something here. Um, and then Dell's game, these two abstract games that are more abstract than, than, than I've seen, really, outside of, again, Second Season Express, Grid Zone, Fast Drive Football, right, these abstractions that have a little more depth to them. And what a wonderful thing. Um, but also, again, if you would have said to me, if you would have said to me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to at 54 at the end of 2024, have more good tabletop football game choices 
Uh, I would have said you're crazy. There's just, there's, there's not, you know, again, innovation. I mean, I can get very innovative, but I can also get really boring and dull. I mean, I can, I can take a game to its full length of it as a simulator with every bit of minutia and I can turn it into a grind and uh, people can claim it's a very accurate, very amazing football game, but it'll be boring and I won't play it. So those kind of games come along at times, right? Oh, another brilliant game, Glory Days College Football. I haven't played this pro game, but but Anthony's Glory Days College Football, right? I helped play test that brilliant abstract game, right? Uh, with features that no other game ever had, uh, where you sim to a point. You know, uh, you can actually sim three quarters of play, then stop and play just those downs. Or that was completely unique. Uh, uh, all information contained on the team cards, a handful of dice, and you can play it in multiple ways. Uh, that that would have been a tough, that would have been a Game of the Year nominee when it came out. Uh, that was the same year I think I got, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know the year I picked them up. I'm only talking about the years I buy them, not the years they come out, because I may not buy them the year they come out. I don't know if there was another football game that year that had come out. Um. But yeah, Glory Days College Football is another one. It's abstract um, and uh, remarkable in game design, right? Handful of dice, and it it you know it, it's it's like a tree of information, and then you move the ball, right? And you 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 sim out the drive to a point, or you can literally drive the ball down the field. You can you can zoom in to a time and place on the field, which I had never seen in a tabletop football game. And these things are so cool, right? I mean, it just shows you, uh, it just shows you what you can do with some dice, and some uh, calculator and uh, probabilities. Um, uh, again, the human, the human um, uh, ability to be creative and imaginative never ceases to uh, blow me away. You know, you, when somebody says, "Hey, man, I made a, a game kind of like," you know, uh, your old game, or "Hey, man, I made a game kind of like." Uh, uh, family football or drive time football. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. And then it's not at all. Drive time, drive time football is not at all like family time. It's only like it in that it's a possession based game, and you make one or you make a roll for a possession. That's it's that's the only way it's like it. It's it's the it's the engine that's similar, right? We're just going to roll the dice. One's eleven to sixty six. It's going to tell you whether you score, field goal, or punt. Uh, drive time is going to tell you whether it's offense, defense, red zone. Then it's going to then you get a roll to see what happens in those situations. So family football, if family football is the simplest version, drive time football is this elegant dy dynamism of branching trees that doesn't slow the game down. It's, it's and, and and you see the personalities of offenses, defenses, and red zone ability. Fantastic! I I would have never in a million years. Uh, um, thought somebody was going to come out and and make something that took those types of games, game winning drive football, etc., and added just that little bit. I don't know why, because I'm constantly creating and making new engines, new games. Some go in the garbage. Some sit here forever, and I don't go back to them until I'm bored one day and I'll dig them out. Say, oh, this might have been a good idea. And then some I see to the end, and I publish them for people. I publish them for my peers. But, uh. And I was thinking about this. Sometimes non-sports fans, guys that aren't diehard fans of a sport, might actually, uh, they're not constrained by their ideas of what they have played, what they've loved, what they've enjoyed, and what they've experienced, and what they expect from real football. If you would have said Dell was going to make a football game, I would have said, okay, you know, I don't, Dell's not a diehard football fan. Dell doesn't play tabletop sports games. Dell didn't grow up playing all these tabletop sports. Now Dell played war games. Dell plays board games. His father invented board games and Dell's a big war gamer and he's a big role player, but you know, Dell doesn't do the sports gaming thing. And then I'm thinking those can, those can be constraints sometimes, right? Um, when I first play tested, I play tested it wrong. Because it never dawned to me that you roll one time and where the ball, where that, where that drive, where that movement stops, the other team takes over without explanation. You know, Dell wrote it, hey, roll, you move three, the other team takes over. I'm like, but that means football. That's a, well, that don't make no sense. And Dell's like, no, 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 no. It is football, but 
you're expecting it to be like first down, second down, or hey, you're going to drive, 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 touchdown, or drive, 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 fumble, or drive, drive, punt. No, you're just going to make one roll. And you make sense of why the, the other team now has the ball at that point. And it's like, holy shit, that is, that is amazing. I mean, it's like, what? I would have never in a million, million years thought of that. And I love that. I just love that human beings are so imaginative and so creative. And what it does by exposing me to it, I'm now more oh, I'm now more conscious. I'm now more open-minded to this kind of thing. It's like, holy shit. Um, you have to, I guess, be curious enough or imaginative enough or um not threatened, you know, by new games. Uh as a designer, you can't be in competition. You can't be about it can't be about jealousy. It can't be about competition. It's got to be about that's that's awesome. That that deserves its place at the table. Uh, and then there are those games that come along. Where you go, wow, this is so good. I, I, you know, it's almost embarrassing how good this is. I, I wish I had invented it. But I also think when you invent your own stuff, um, you don't necessarily want to play your own stuff. It's like you know the magic. It's like you know the. It's like you. It's like doing magic. If I know the trick then yeah, I do it to entertain other people, but I'm not so I'm not so enamored with my own magic because I know how I did the trick, right? When you design a game, you you it's totally transparent to you. So you know why things occur, right? I, I designed the probabilities in Flash Football to create an experience. It's not a mystery to me. Doesn't mean I don't love it and I'm not surprised by it and I'm not enjoying it, but because it's yours and you spent so much time developing it, you know, you know every wart on it. You know every potential problem with it, right? If you're self-aware and if you're willing to criticize and critically evaluate your own work, then you will admit those things. I, I, Gary, I remember telling Gary, my God, man, I, I, would, I would glow to Gary about GridZone. He'd be very much like, eh, you know, uh, I think I think that's kind of how Gary feels about GridZone. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all right, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he doesn't know that he created something that changed my consciousness about how we can do this thing and why we do this thing and what kind of experiences and surprise can I get out of this thing? What kind of depth to continue to play, right? Obviously he was aware of it, created it. And then he created an off season chart and he put ratings on the players that change with the off season. So Gary was clearly aware of what he was doing, but whether he finds the game, you know, that great or not, probably because he knows the work that went into it. He knows the mysteries. He knows the math. And I think sometimes it's best to be ignorant of those things when you want to really enjoy. Um, I don't like to reverse, I don't reverse engineer the games. I like to experience them. I like to, I'll be critical of them. I'll say, okay, this I get, I see what this does. Oh, that doesn't work. Or, Ooh, I wish it didn't have so many dice or, Oh man, why did he have to make that decision for game design? Um, but I don't reverse engineer games because I, I like the mystery. Like I don't make an effort to reverse engineer uh, John's formula for drive time football. I, I just want to enjoy, I want to look at that card and say, wow, the Patriots, that's awesome. I'm going to roll dice and I'm going to watch the Patriots whoop the shit out of people all year long. I don't want to reverse engineer it to see how accurate. Is this worth my time? Is this really accurate? No, I just want to play the 2007 Pats and enjoy it. Fast drive football. First time I saw it, it was like, what is this? It's like this number sequence. It's asking me questions like a, like a computer program. If this, then, you know, if this go to line 20, if anybody programmed, if anybody did any coding as a kid, I, I coded, I taught myself basic visual basic and I taught myself uh, programming on the Commodore 64. My first programming was we would buy those mag PC gamer magazines. We would go home at night and we'd stay up all night long sharing typing in some downhill skiing game that was a piece of shit but that's how we learned to code and you know you if then statements right and you when you look at keith avalone's uh it's all logic statements they're logic statements is it true or false this they're just logic statements but i grew up playing randomized games like pater and fast action games with with probability elements built into the number systems they weren't if then statements they weren't logic sequences so when you see something like second season football, you go, holy shit, logic sequences for a tabletop game. This is genius. I can go anywhere with this. And then you see how that kind of inspires 
Bass Drive Football, right? Uh, it's uh, it's amazing, right? Inspiration is amazing. I see Dell's game, and I go, where the hell did this come from, right? I've never seen anything like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I literally, and the and I I, I was tempted to, to immediately. I did it wrong. Uh, then I realized I did it wrong, and then I I said, oh, I know what I did wrong, and then I played a second play test, and I did it wrong. Had a great time. Told Dale, my God, dude, you got a great game here. Turned out I was doing it wrong. It was great fun. I was doing it wrong. Then when Dale said, no, you do it this way. Then I had to fight the urge to say, yeah, but that isn't, that isn't football. That, that isn't going to feel like I'm moving the ball down the field. And I would have, I would have hand waved that off or I would have, I would have suggested, Hey, let's change it. Shows me how to do it. Right. I type up the rules. I start play testing it correctly. I get it. Instantly, the light bulb goes on, and I go, now what we have to do is add the details. Why is this ball, why did this turn end here, and the other team now has the ball? If I can just put a chart together that fills in that blank, it'll be much easier for people to accept the abstract notion that after we go three down the field, bang, 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 suddenly it's the other team's ball. Why is it the other team's ball? There's a reason for that. I can create it, but that chart allows people to determine with, with a single die roll, oh, it was a punt, oh, it was an interception, oh, it was a fumble. And instantly, it's like the light bulb went on, and I went, oh, shit, this is genius. It's genius. And uh, I, can't give enough, I can't give enough props to all these fellow gamers. Um, uh, John Turnbull's game is just remarkable. And he's getting, it's getting better every day. It's getting more, the card's getting more attractive every day. He's, he's subtly tweaking. Um, and uh, we'll see where he goes with it. I, I, I have a, a inside track a little bit with John as he shares a little bit with me that he may share on his Facebook, but I don't know. I won't share it here in case he doesn't, but I hope the future of drive time football is expanding. Let's put it that way. Right. Because drive time football is special. Yeah. Uh, and where it would fit into my lexicon is when I get away from history, when I get away from replay. Suddenly, drive time football means more to me when it's something else. And so I'm hoping John will take it in that direction uh, because then it gets more playtime at my table. And uh, I went over all the records of my 17 seasons of our grid zone. So we started with pen and paper football. So when we started the Patriot Football League, we cr I created players. We did a draft with pen and paper football. We played two years with pen and paper, and then we transitioned to my game, flash football. And we played, I don't know, five or six seasons using flash football because it was it's a better designed game for snap to snap. And it was, uh, uh, we could have a uh, financial module. They could write their own game plans that would tell me how to call plays. So flash football. And I looked back on those records, and we must have had five or six seasons using my game flash football. And I'm looking back on those records and those rosters and the, and the money, because we had money, we had finances. I said, holy shit, this was amazing. Why did we change? Why did we leave flash football? And then I get to the grid zone portion of that. So Patriot Football League went through four different games, uh, pen and paper football, flash football. Uh, one year I was way too busy and I had to use uh, a pro football strategy. So I put all the teams into football, football strategy and I simulated the games for two years using pro football strategy for those who know the pro football strategy game on steam, which is a brilliant game. So I literally put all the leagues teams and players into that. And I simulated those games because I was too busy at work to play the games. And then we found grid zone and the last six years were played with a grid zone, right? We transitioned the rosters and the players into grid zone and the owners just moved with me as I would, you know, try to find a better path for me to resolve games. Cause remember I had to play every game. Um, and for me not to get bored, tired, or or, or uh, disgruntled or whatever, you know, you got to let me adjust it a little bit. I had players, I'm sure, who dropped out of the league because they didn't like the fact that I would change games. Oh, well, it's I've got to do what I got to do to enjoy the process of sitting at the table. And you can burn out. I mean, I looked just compiling the records for Grid Zone over the last two days for the uh, Full On Football book. Uh, it reminded me of of why I burned out. I mean, I in and I think in a year and a half, I would say a year and a half to two years, um, I played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games, 
not including the Patriot Football League, which was hundreds of games that I recorded, many of them in video. So it was like a job. And after a while, I just got burned out. I got tired. I said, I can't, I, I need a break. And so I don't, I, you know, I, I now pace myself better now, but uh, I loved every minute of it. And then there was that moment where it's like uh, the law of diminishing returns. For those of you who understand that economic term, you hit the, I hit the law of diminishing returns. And I said, okay, I don't know if I'm enjoying the, the process of this. I don't know if I'm getting enough out of the process of this anymore. And a burnout occurs. And I have not played grid zone seriously uh, since then. I've played one or two games. I, I started to start an, another league once and played, I think the first week and said, I don't, I just don't, um, I burned out and uh, I love grid zone, but, uh, and, and I would argue I had a little of an addiction because I was playing, I was playing away from the public in a 1940s NFL league that I created. I was playing those games privately. And uh, I'd even made a fast action deck for that to try to speed up play. Um, so that I look back now and say, wow, that was, that was almost an obsession. Right. Um, but it was fun and it was worth it. You know, not a bad way, just that, you know, you, you find yourself not doing anything else outside of your responsibilities. Anyway, long story short, I don't know why I'm making this video. I just wanted to share. I was thinking about, wow, you know, I, I've never done a game of the year video, probably because I just don't play enough games. Uh, I did. There was a period where, like I said, I was buying a lot. But I've been thinking a lot in such a short window. Roller Derby, Drive Time Football, and now Dell's game hit me in such a short window that I went, holy shite, including my own games, which I – you know, again, embarrassing can tell you I love. I can't vote my own games as game of the year. Uh, that would just be egotistical or or something or bias. Um, and again, as I said before, you know the magic when you make your games. Uh, you know how they work. You know there's no there's no mystery there with your own inventions. Uh, so there's something about that the mystery of drive time football when I roll those dice and don't know how it's going to go and i'm not even certain the probabilities are really 100 right but i don't care because it looks like i mean it's giving me the results i'd like to see and i expect to see and i'm not going to waste time trying to figure out if it's perfect or not right I, I i play the games to find out i play the games for competition i don't play the games to measure them against what they did in real life i am not a replayer so even when i play an a nfl season or i'm playing nfl games i have normal expectations of what I expect the 85 bears to do, but I'm not trying to see if they can go 15 and one again. I'm not trying to see how close the engine gets to that. I just want to see the bears beat the shit out of people, right? That's, I want to see the competition or, Hey, could the Rams in this playoff not get shut out by the bears? Could Dickerson score and make this game interesting? We all know what happened in real life. It was a butt whoop and it was embarrassing, right? You know, can the bears beat Marino on Monday night? Those are the what ifs I'm looking for. I'm not really worried about whether the score was exact or whether Dan Marino did it all with his arm or whether the Dolphins were running a couple of touchdowns or something, right? So anyway, um, that's the joy of the hobby. Grid zone. Uh, in 96, I invented my flash football game to use fictional teams and to have a career mode or to take the, the pre-made historical teams to the next season. So you could process the Denver Broncos in 96. Do the offseason, see if Terrell Davis leaves or stays the same, etc. That was the goal. And I played that way. And I found how much I love playing and creating my own universes, my own heroes, my own history, uh, my own records. Instead of the expectations that, man, Johnny Unitas wouldn't throw 32 interceptions in a, in a year, right? Uh, expectations can ruin it for you, right? When you're playing fictional, you're playing... Uh, your own worlds, heroes will arise and goats, you know, uh, will show up and uh, stooges and scapegoats. And, you know, you'll see records made, you'll see, you'll, and you'll always be, uh, it'll always be new to you when you're playing your own, your own stuff, right? Uh, your own leagues, your own players, your own um, universes, right? Okay, I'll shut up now. So my game of the year, as of today, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what's the old saying? I'm one of those guys where the last thing I played is my favorite thing, right? People will know. They're going to say, yeah, Jay, 
And, and tomorrow you'll find a new football game and you'll say, that's amazing. Yeah, they're all amazing. They're all worth it. They're all worth it. If you don't love this hobby and you don't love all the stuff you're playing, when you play it, then I think you're in the wrong hobby. You might want to try fishing or, uh, you know, buy an old Mustang, fix it up and go hang out with a Mustang club, you know, uh, you know, paint, you know, learn how to play piano, do something else. Because if you're if you're not whatever you're playing, you're not having a good time with uh, and you're and, and you probably shouldn't be doing it. You probably shouldn't be in this hobby. So but yeah, I tend to be like, wow. And I love new man. I love innovative. I love new. I love being surprised by what human beings can achieve with dice and charts. And uh, uh, it just it gives me faith, right? Uh, it's not artificial intelligence. It's human intuition. It's human intelligence, human intuition. So what does artificial intelligence not have? And it will never have. Intuition. It can accidentally appear to us as outsiders looking at its results as intuitive. But it's not. Artificial intelligence will never have intuition. It will never be, it will never intuit, right? It will never imagine, right? It'll only do what we ask it to do. That doesn't mean it won't surprise us with the results and it cannot process things faster than we can for data collection or for data analysis, but it's never going to imagine anything, right? Even when I say, even when I want to make the covers for my books, I have to prompt it. I have to imagine for it. I'm imagining a black and white vignette illustration of 1940s football, a quarterback. I have to tell it. I have to actually imagine for it. Then it does the work of creating an image that I'm not capable of creating for good or ill. And uh, it did a quarterback for me the other day and, and had six fingers. I laughed. I said, this is the problem. <laughs> why, why does my quarterback have six fingers? You know, literally has five fingers and a thumb. Yeah, I'm like, holy shit, dude, that's uh, that's amazing, right? Uh, AI is constantly jacking shit up like that, you know. Anyway, listen, I'm going to shut up now. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Good day.